John Pascal. And of course, the first statistic is the glaring one, an 18-year age advantage for Pascal. Two-inch height advantage for Hopkins. Pascal with a half-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. Pascal weighed in under the 175-pound limit. Bernard Hopkins needed three trips to the scale to ultimately make weight. Tonight, they will both enter the ring at 186. Let's take a look at CompuBox. Let's go. Boxers, our under referee. I suppose you're both in the dressing room. I back up command at all times. You both know the rules. Watch the heads, keep the punches up. When I shall break, you break clean. And remember, defend yourself at all times. Shake hands. Hey, it's good. Let's go. Let's go. Can 46-year-old Bernard Hopkins beat this strong, hungry, young champion in the champion's Ready? hometown to Judge, break George Ready? Foreman's record Judge, as the Ready? oldest man to win a championship in the history of boxing? To the Raptors. The crowd is in rapture <laughs> as the clock takes us close to midnight and May 22. And these two men get into the ring to fight for the light heavyweight championship of the world. The pace of the first fight was slow, marked by occasional explosions. That's the basic nature of a Bernard Hopkins fight, Emmanuel Stewart. He is brilliant at slowing the pace and limiting opponents' offense. How do you expect this to go, Emmanuel? Well, I'll tell you right now, what Bernard is making him do is, is to making him burn up a lot of energy by moving around a lot. And uh, I think Pascal is going to have to be a little bit more physical. He's got to be a little bit more aggressive. Because if he doesn't, Bernard would drain him. But what's unusual, Bernard is saying he's going to come out early in this fight applying pressure. And traditionally, a Bernard Hopkins fight, after four rounds, he very seldom is ahead on points. He's usually behind because he waits until it's comfortable to pick up the pace. He cannot do that in this fight. Once again, in their first fight in December, Pascal won the first four rounds, knocked Hopkins down twice, built a six-point margin on the scorecard, was able to make it hold up, seemingly with the help of sympathetic judges, to get the draw and hold on to his championship. Hopkins has promised he'll start earlier tonight. He derisively refers to Pascal as a four-round fighter. Well, that's because Pascal, most of his fights, he tires at the end. He's a very hyper-emotional guy, as we saw just before the fight started. And that way burns up a lot of his energy just off of those emotions. So good at moving away from punches as they travel their trajectory. So good at taking the power off of punches by turning his head or rolling his shoulder. So good at every small defensive nuance the sport offers. Well, Bernard is from the old school, and he's from the Philadelphia, those type places where they learn to box the old school way. And that's what Pascal is just the opposite, seems very green. And it's a big question of whether Pascal could have picked up that polish or seasoning in this short period of time. Because he still fights like a hyper for the most part, amateur type fighter. Hopkins fighting with his lead glove, almost like they used to hold it 100 years ago, Emmanuel, that's almost old, with his palm facing his chin. That's the old, old style, which I believe in. Instead of holding the right hand more on the side of the head, he keeps it right near the center. All right, right hand by Pascal. And a body shot. First two significant landed punches of the fight. And in that late rally toward the end of the round, you saw how Pascal burns energy. He has to explode. Yes, and what he did at the end of the round is what he should be doing more often. Right, that's Being very physical, very useful. And, 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 and with, with Bernard. Cut the ring down. Don't follow this motherfucker. Cut the ring down. The jab will find his range, Jack. When you start doubling up that jab, you'll start seeing that right hook open up to the body. This joke is just trying to steal rounds now. He's going to just jump around. So cut the ring off. Let him see you come to fight. Right? Let me jump. Okay? Bon premier round. 
Good first round. Good first round, champ. Surtout qu'on se retrouve dans médium distance et là on Make explose. sure you're at a medium distance and then be explosive. Get the center of the ring. The center of the ring belongs to you. Okay, he's going to have to work. He's not. You're at home. He's not. He's going to have to work. Make him work in there. Good job. Well, this fight got off to the typical Bernard Hopkins start. He landed two punches in the first round, only threw 11. Pascal was 4 of 35. We did not get a chance to interview Chad Dawson at the end of the first fight. His unanimous decision win over Adrian Jacanu. But Chad joins us now at ringside in round two, along, along with his new trainer, Emmanuel Stewart. Chad, congratulations on the win. Thank you, thank you. How'd you like your performance? Uh, could be a little better, you know, ring rust. You know, um, I try to execute everything, man, so, and it's put together. But, you know, it takes time, you know. We have to be together a lot longer, you know. And ne the next fight, I definitely will be ready for the winner of this fight. Chad, we have a question from the audience. A fan wants to know, did you hurt your right hand? You didn't throw it much later in the fight. No, I didn't hurt my right hand. You know, um, Adrian was a slick fighter. You know, he um, he threw a lot of looping shots. You know, he was strong. You know, I just try to control the pace of the fight. You know, and just dictate what was going on. What do you see here, Chad? Uh, I see the first round. You know, a lot of filling out. You know, like this round, they're both taking a little bit of some more chances. You know, so um, but now he's looking pretty good. You know, he's, he's not he's not making too many mistakes. You know, he's trying to be cautious. Same as Pascal. You know, both of them are very cautious. Look like they just filling each other out. Oh, uh, I don't know how long, much longer this is gonna last, but looking to be so far a slow, slow pace, just like the first fight. Do you have any preference as to whether ultimately this becomes a rematch with Pascal or the fight you've wanted for so long against Bernard Hopkins? Uh, it really doesn't matter. You know, I would love to get the revenge on Pascal, and I would love to get in the ring with Bernard Hopkins, who's a legend. You know, just to get that name on my resume. Who would you prefer, Emmanuel? I really wouldn't matter on either one, you know, because Pascal, a rematch him would be great, but naturally Bernard Hopkins is one of the greatest middleweights ever, and it. it would be an honor to fight him, but either way would be good, and in fact, it seems like the fight most likely is going to end up, possibly, if it is, everyone is made back here in Montreal. It just seems to be the hottest spot in boxing right now. This crowd would indicate that it is. A minute to go in round two. Pascal has had a couple of those swarming attacks at Hopkins early in the first minute of this round. Hopkins countered, fought back. But generally speaking, Bernard has not attempted in any way to attack John Pascal. He's waiting for Pascal to come to him. Emmanuel, Chad, quickly, your first fight together, how do you think it went? Well, I, I thought it was good, you know. It, it, it good. The Akadu fought one of his best fights, which we expected. With his hometown support, the Romanian crowd, the Lucian Rute crowd here cheering him on, he fought beyond his normal level. So he, was, he fought very hard tonight. It was, it was, I thought Chad fought well. He could do better, but it takes time. Chad, how about you, your first fight with Emmanuel Stewart? Like Emmanuel said, it takes time. You know, we've been together for six or seven, months, seven weeks. So, you know, it takes time. You know, um, I definitely like his training methods, you know. I'm looking forward to the next training camp. All right, Chad, thank you very much for spending time with us. Congratulations on your 30th win. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. There were two significant landed punches in that round that I saw. One was a Pascal left hook. The other was a Pascal body shot. By my lights, he's probably won the first two rounds. Very tough to score, though. He, he looks much stronger, much more powerful than uh, Bernard does. But Bernard seems to be very determined. Stay off the straight line, because all he's doing is ducking his head and running forward. Step off that straight line, that's when you take that angle, step over left, step over right. Stay behind that stick, put them short shots underneath. Don't go big with him. Oh, he's about to he's about to attack. He doesn't know how to go at Get at you. Step approach doucement, explode. Get near him very slow, then explode. Give your best shots, but keep a good safe defense. Get at him slowly and then surprise this guy. All right, you got to master the center of the ring. That center of the ring belongs to you. He's moving around. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what to do. So keep going. Official attendance at the Bell Center tonight, 17,750. You'd be hard-pressed to get another body into the building. Punches in round two, Pascal 6 of 24, Hopkins 4 of 27. So far, they've landed fewer than 20 punches in the fight. Tough for Harold Hopkins. Letterman agrees with me that Pascal won the first two. Tough for Hopkins to come to Montreal and win a decision. He, he doesn't knock anyone out anymore, it doesn't seem. 
against a guy who got an unpopular draw against him last time. And in the first two rounds, he may have lost each by two punches in each round. Not a formula for success. Indeed, Hopkins hasn't had a knockout in 10 fights since Oscar De La Hoya in 2004. So when George Foreman says Bernard has to seal the deal with a knockout this time, he's asking for something outside the norm. And that's true in particular a young, strong fighter like Pascal is. Never been off his feet. Finished and every fight. In the first fight, we saw how slippery the ring is, and Hopkins almost slipped in. And Pascal catches him inside with a left. Hopkins got a couple of body shots in. This is the type of a fight that Pascal should fight and not be moving away so much. He's much younger, much faster, and then stronger, and he needs to fight that type of a fight. Moving forward, rough explosion type punches, and not backing away so much. Pascal's promoter and trainers say that he was awed by Hopkins' reputation in the first fight, and that's why he wasn't more aggressive. These are some real hard shots Hopkins is landing here. That's the first offensive explosion of the fight for Hopkins. And then we spoke too soon about his lack of knockouts recently. That Hopkins goes in with his head first, I, I, I clearly think, intentionally. I think Hop Hopkins actually hurt Pascal there with that right hand. Wanted to rub him in the face with his head just to, for good measure. Now Bernard jabbing and coming forward. You know that Bernard Hopkins feels he has an advantage when he begins to jab and I come forward. Pascal has been hurt because I'm looking at his legs, particularly when he was in the clinches there. What do you see, Emmanuel? He's a, younger, like? he's a younger fighter, but his legs look much weak in the clinches. I think he was hurt with that right hand. You see his knees buckling? Yes, even in the clinches, you know, his, his, his legs look very unsteady. John Pascal, by his account, has never been knocked down professional or amateur. We know that as a pro, he hasn't been down. Hopkins looks like he's trying to put him down here. Pascal had the traditional amateur career. They both landed shots there. Bernard's right hand, probably the harder of the two. Pascal had the traditional amateur career. Hopkins' amateur career took place in Greater Fruit Prison, where he spent four and a half years from the time as a teenager when he was involved in an armed robbery until he was released from prison and the warden said, I'll see you when you come back. He hasn't made another mistake. Bernard is fighting, but, but not his normal fight tonight. He's very aggressive and punching with a lot of power early in the fight. The body shot by Pascal. And Pascal finishes the round with an offensive rally. June 11, tune into the next HBO Sports documentary, McEnroe, Borg, Fire and Dice. It's a look back at the hyper-intense John McEnroe and the ultra-low-key Bjorn Borg and how these men came to admire and respect each other along the way, just like boxers. July 2, it's finally here. The long-awaited matchup between heavyweight champ Vladimir Klitschko and his verbal nemesis, David Hay. They meet in the ring live on HBO with a replay later that evening. You gotta keep your hand up. Like, Keep your right hand way high. You got explode when you get to him. But you, he, you got caught. Keep your right hand way up high. Here we see Bernard land the right hand, which I thought was the best punch of the fight. And to me, I think may have changed the course of the fight. Because from that point on, it seemed like Bernard had more confidence. And I saw a look in Pascal's eyes where he's beginning to worry and doubt himself now. After landing so few punches in the first couple of rounds, Hopkins was 12 of 34 in what amounts to a big offensive round for him in round three. Pascal was 7 of 31, but the big right hand was probably the decisive blow in the round. Harold, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim. 29, 28, two rounds to one, Jean Pascal. You know, Jim, Pascal gets off, he starts very, very quick in every fight that he's in. But in round three, Bernard Hopkins went to work. He landed beautiful left hooks. He landed that nice right hand, and John Pascal started to cover boy, up. Boy, when Bernard gets Bernard offensive, Marvel, when Bernard goes to work, go. Pascal go. doesn't punch back. He covers up. Two rounds to one, Pascal. Pascal at this point right here looks insecure, un unsteady, and not as confident as he was earlier. Why is Bernard finding success with long looping right hands from outside, Emmanuel? Well, uh, well whether he's throwing them. He's always had the, the, the punches, but he normally would never fight until the last half of his fights. He's that type of a safety type fighter, but I think he's very, really angry. The nasty side of him is coming out tonight in this fight with Pascal. Hopkins reaching and landing a jab. Gets in a right cross as well. 
Oh, this is a fun side of Bernard Hopkins to watch. Lead right hand landed for Hopkins. Hopkins saying to us yesterday, at age 46, in his 60th pro fight, that he's planning to be more entertaining. The entertaining part is that you're more vulnerable, Bernard. Back in the day, he dominated fights during his 20-fight run as middleweight champion of the world. Good body shot by Hopkins, good body shot by Pascal. Hard right hand by Pascal. Now Pascal begins to assert himself again. But he's and his faster hands show. He needs to do this more because he's much faster, much stronger, and much more sturdier. But the problem is he fights in spots. And now when he's going on vacation, Bernard is going to gradually start taking control of the fight again. But because Pascal punches like he means it, uh, unlike Jermaine Taylor at times, and unlike Caldaghi usually, he's forcing Bernard, I think, to be more exciting, Emmanuel, to yes. dig harder and throw harder shots. Absolutely. And that plus the bad blood between the two of them, making Bernard fight out of his normal style. This rematch was ordered on Pascal by the governing body because of what the governing body saw as questionable scoring in the first fight. Golden Boy protested vigorously, Hopkins' promoter, about the judges in the first fight, and partially in response to that. Oh, oh, there are no Canadian Hopkins judges here. Hurt. Big right hand by Pascal. Hopkins backs up. And now Bernard seems to recover pretty quickly from the top. But it's that brought the crowd out of their seats. Tremendous punch. I mean, he was seriously hurt. I think that's the first time in his career that I saw Bernard hurt. Agreed. Like that, yes. Here you see the right hand that comes by Pascal, one of those right hands that Bernard got hit with that normally he would not have gotten hit with early in the fight because he plays it safe. But this time he's exchanging, as you said, Jim, he's making it much more exciting, but also much more easier to get hit and hurt than he does in, in his previous fights. And that's the point. In order to be more exciting, you have to be more vulnerable. Bernard's not accustomed to that. Excitement comes from taking risks. Great fighters are comfortable taking risks in most instances, but Hopkins, by and large, has always been a risk-limiting fighter. Hopkins has admitted that Pascal is a tremendous puncher. He calls him a clubber. He throws with the kind of force that moves you when it lands. And only Hopkins' heart and conditioning, I think, kept him up in that round. But after the big finish to round three, or round four, I should say, Pascal comes out tentatively in round five before landing that little body shot. Good hard left hook and an uppercut. And once again, Pascal's got the Hopkins chin. Yeah, Pascal is just waiting and fighting in the, in the spurts. But so far, it's worked out pretty fair for him. And based on this fight being in Montreal, probably is a hit on the scorecards. Well, what happens is he, he gets into that lull, things are slow, and then he erupts, and the hand speed can be shocking. Hopkins got a warning for using his head earlier. That's the second time he's done that after he's been stunned or something. And just to finish the point I was making earlier, after everything that happened in December, that's an English referee, and the judges are from Italy, Philippines, and Thailand. Nobody from Canada, nobody from the United States. But even with that, they're often influenced by the crowd. I mean, even though they may be from neutral places, they're influenced often by the crowd's reaction. Hopkins landed a little right hand. Pascal attacked him with a left hook and a body shot at the ropes. 
heard Hopkins trainer Nazim Richardson in the corner say, don't get involved with that young stuff. <laughs> don't Hopkins trade with it. Is, go, back fighting a man, go back to fighting your old style. Right, as an old man, he's fighting a young man's fight here. He is. And he's fighting it right well. on the belt line. Hopkins body shot. And now he's holding Pascal with the left while hitting with the right. landing slightly larger number of punches, Pascal landing the harder, more significant punches. Higher, higher, higher. keep your hands higher. I know you're trying to put your left shoulder before you. He's seeing it, that's why he's using his jab on him. Come near him, take his jab away from him. Keep his hand, keep his right hand away from him. Wipe his nose with that damn hook. Teach this young boy some lessons. You're in your rhythm now. Just keep them hands up for me. All right, you see when you tied him up. You see as soon as you started that wild stuff, and you tied him up, it calms him down. Don't get into those little wild shit with him, man. Okay, turn him in. Angle off. Don't go straight back. How many box numbers in the fifth round found Pascal landing only four, 27 punches. Hopkins, eight out of 31. And Pascal landed the harder punch. Hopkins has an overall land advantage. And he starts out the sixth round with a pop. But as you can see, Harold Letterman has scored four of the first five rounds for Pascal. Archie Moore was in his 40s. He fought Canadian. Von Durrell in one of the all-time great fights in boxing history at War One. This is not exactly that so far, but especially for a Bernard Hopkins fight, this is a lot of action here tonight. And I'm very impressed with Bernard's performance at this, at this point in the fight. Regardless Ivan, of what the score is, he fought a very good boxing, aggressive boxing, fight. Yvonne Durrell knocked Archie out. Moore down three times stop boxing, early. Stop boxing, Moore knocked Durrell down four times to reel him in and win boxing. the fight. No knockdowns here, but both guys have been legitimately hurt. In the quarter between rounds, and via our French translator, Chris Jose, Crochet, you heard Pascal's trainer telling him, keep your hands up, fight more carefully, don't fall for his tricks. Hard right hand by Hopkins. Another hard right hand by Hopkins. Straight right hand lead landed that time. Hopkins mixing it up a little. Another right hand lead for Hopkins. And Hopkins now using it a little more intelligently from a greater distance, tying Pascal up after he lands it. I think he's way ahead of Pascal in this round with a tactical adjustment which has made it hard for Pascal to see the punches coming. When I say I, don't hold, I'm and very, I say, great, very impressed with that. Do you understand me? Prepare you, okay? Box! That British referee, Ian John Lewis, is the referee who allowed Vitaly Klitschko to beat Shannon Briggs into the hospital. But I thought he took charge there in a good way. Well, you saw Pascal blink in his eye. Something happened when Bernard hit him in his eye. But at this point, Bernard is totally taking control of the fight. And now, Hopkins is arguing with the referee as he holds on to Pascal while the referee, Ian John Lewis, tries to get him to break. Third warning now for using his head, Hopkins. It only stands to reason that a British referee 
who has never dealt with this boxing legend, might be more reluctant to penalize him than would an American referee who's known him for years. And this is one of the roughest fights that I've saw a referee have to work with a long time, too. Both of them style is, you know, where Byron has always been accused of doing a lot of rough tactics, and Pascal right now is a run-in, punch, grab type fighter. Another right-hand lead. Bernard is winning this round big. Yep, he certainly is. He's made a tactical adjustment that Pascal wasn't able to follow. And now they're talking to each other. And Pascal is losing his composure. And you cannot allow Bernard Hopkins to go you into that. Look at me. Look at me. Breathe carefully. Breathe, breathe deeply. You gotta lift your right hand way up higher. Every time he's getting at you, keep your hands up high. Explode. You gotta be the aggressor. He's getting at you. Doing the glove. He's gonna show it to you. Tip your hat, straight right hand, wipe his nose with that hook. All right, you're a legend. He's ducking his hand going wild. Yeah, we see Bernard right here. Duck on any punch, did a couple of whacks, maybe you call it illegal, but I don't think they did any damage to the kidneys of Pascal. And now you see right here, you see a jab which went right inside and the left thumb of Hopkins went right into the eye of Pascal. Okay, so we saw kidney punches and a thumb to the eye. And maybe the kidney punches didn't do damage, but Emmanuel, they're still illegal, aren't they? Now Hopkins is doing push ups in the ring to try to embarrass his younger opponent. <laughs> Everything it looks to me has been done intentionally. The thumb, the head, the kidney shots, obviously. Hopkins is pulling out every trick in the book. Now, answer my question. The kidney shots are the, still illegal, The kidney right? shots is illegal, but it wasn't that major. But I think the things that he's doing now, the, the thumb, I think, did a lot of damage to his eyes. But he's taking total control over the fight at this point. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, so four rounds to two. 58, 56, Sean Pascal. Jim, I believe that at round six, Bernard Hopkins got into his rhythm. Not before that. He started to get off first, and that was the key to him winning the first fight. When he gets off first, he freezes Pascal just like he did right there. He lands good shots, and he dominates Pascal. He's got to throw that first punch. Bernard Hopkins coming forward, landed the good shots, but still four to two, Pascal. Harold, did you hear what you said? You said that was the key to Hopkins winning the first fight. He, he got off first all night, Jim. It was a draw. Oh, well, well oh. you know what happened. He shows up! Boy, bring it up, bring it up! Get your head up! Why does a fighter have to pick his head up? Hopkins wasn't hitting him behind the head. This is a very entertaining fight for the crowd. He hop chant here in Montreal. But is Behop resting this round? Yes, but he did enough. I thought in the beginning of the round to win this round because Pascal has not did anything while Bernard has taken a break the last minute. And the ref may have done Pascal a favor when he told him not to bend over because Hopkins was whacking him pretty good with both hands during that time. Right hand lead lands again for Hopkins. He's relying more and more on the right hand lead, less and less on the jab. He's not using that brilliant right hand counter punch of his, which has been his primary offensive weapon much of the time. He's to me that's all the way around fighting a fantastic fight. Good the left hook. three rounds have been tremendous. Another wrestling match. Push We've had a couple of those. Hopkins outlanding Pascal significantly through this portion of the fight. Good left hook by Bernard. Two different fights. In the Dawson-Yakunov fight, 
It was so clean, I never used the referee Mark Griffin's name. This is different. Totally different. That guy has to go back. You've got to move him back. You need to attack this guy. Straight forward attacks. Work inside. Keep under, but work inside. Work your way in. Closing the distance with that right hand now. Drop it right on the collarbone for me. Straight. Come back with the hook. Behind the jab. Behind the jab with a different angle. Keep corralling. He start his antics when he start getting tired. He start his hey, antics. Gentlemen. Start them good body shots going again. Time to finish him out. Start them body shots. Happy box numbers in the seventh round. Pascal, 6 out of 30. Hopkins, 16 out of 37. 16. Connected punches, the high number in the fight so far for Bernard. On Harold Letterman's card, Pascal won four of the first five rounds, but in the sixth and the seventh, Bernard Hopkins has struck back. Maybe it's because of the crowd. Maybe because Hopkins is trying to make history. Maybe it's because they're both throwing real hard shots. But there's a kind of nervous energy in this building tonight that you don't always find, even in big prize fights nowadays. You know what? I, I, I know this sounds awkward, but uh, strange. But I think Bernard is fighting the best fight I've ever saw him fight, aside from the Trinidad fight. When you consider his age, and you consider this crowd and everything, and as young as this man is, I've never saw him fight this aggressive early in a fight. Emmanuel, do you remember how completely he dominated Antonio Tarver and Kelly Bablick in Atlantic City? Yeah, but I would think this is better. It was a different. He's fighting much more aggressive. Power touches. He won those fights, made those guys look bad, but not with the aggression and determination that he's fighting with tonight. Oh, so I hear what you're saying. You're an offensive trainer who appreciates offensive fighters, and you want to see Bernard take more risks and he's trying to fight offensive. Tonight. Yeah, yes. you know, against Tarver and Pavlik. Oh! Super right hand by Hopkins. All right. More wrestling. Finish the point, Max. Against Tarver and Pavlik, Hopkins fought a very controlled fight and completely dominated both, outboxing them. As his physical tools have eroded somewhat, his skills are still there, but his reflexes. He is 46 years old now, after all. And he's fighting a big, strong, in his prime, light heavyweight champ. Another sensational right hand. Keep he's going. been forced to go away from the smoke and mirrors, Bernard Hopkins, and become more of a a real fighter, a more of a blood and guts guy. Emmanuel, Pascal seems to be easier and easier to hit, particularly with those right-hand leads. Why is he open to the right-hand lead? And the left jabs are still working a lot, and they're still hitting those jabs inside, meaning Bernard. I think it's just the experience and the season that Bernard has that Pascal still hasn't developed. Pascal's punches did not land solidly there, though the crowd got excited. Yeah, but Bernard's jabs are working. Another right big again. right hand for Hopkins. He is landing some sensational right crosses in this round. Totally different from Bernard in the past. If you live long enough, you see Shane Mosley stink it out and Hopkins light it on fire. <laughs> There's a look at what has happened in the fight so far. Pascal landed more punches in the first two rounds. Hopkins landed more punches in each of the next six. This repeats a pattern in the first fight. Hopkins landed more punches in 11 of 12 rounds in the first fight. So there simply are seldom, if ever, any rounds where Pascal is able to dominate Hopkins offensively because Bernard is so gifted at limiting Pascal's offense. When he lowers his head, get to him, John. As soon as he's got his head down, you gotta get to him. You're doing good, champ. Keep going. Here you see Bernard land a tremendous right hand, and what was so special about this is the fact that he landed about three or four of those. And Pascal could not land a clean effective punch the entire round. 
An entirely different Bernard Hopkins in deep. Scoring with right hand leads, not waiting for the chance to counter with the right hand, attacking with it. But he's going in and, and getting in exchanges. We're in the ninth of the schedule 12, and incidentally, the fight is now even on Harold Letterman's scorecard. Four rounds apiece. That was a good punch for Pascal, but Hopkins was moving away. Taking the impact off of it. Hopkins has been very good. That is it? a knockdown. That should have that been called a knockdown. Knock. He landed a punch and the glove touched the canvas. I believe that was a knockdown. That was definitely a knockdown. And if it was, it would have been the first knockdown of Pascal's career. His foot was slipping on the on the wet on the wet. But he would not have went thing. down without being touched by. That's the, true. Uh, I, you guys, even if it was on the shoulder, he'd be pretty close call. Another big yep. right hand for Hopkins. Pascal countering right. this time. I'm glad it wasn't called a knockdown. Better for the fight. I think it was the more, it more, it more accurately reflects what really happened. Probably right, but we'll see if the glove touched the I canvas, agree. I hope. The rounds that Pascal has won, with the exception of the round where he hurt Hopkins badly, has not been by as obvious margins as the rounds that Hopkins has won, I think. Hopkins just landed a great left hook. He's made a clean punch throughout the whole fight. And what has impressed me, he's willing to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and still goes underneath and slips and slides and Pascal can't hit him even when they have the exchanges. In terms of pure boxing craft, Bernard Hopkins outclasses Jean Pascal. And Pascal is the champion of the world. That's no embarrassment. Bernard Hopkins is the absolute master of craft among current boxers. What is another wrestling match. What is Pascal wincing about on the inside there? He's really wincing like he's in pain. I don't know if he's fully recuperated from where that thumb from Bernard's left jab went in his right eye. And he's blinking with the left eye, too, frankly. Now Pascal showed that he listened to his trainers. They said when Hopkins bends his head over, you have to hit it. Yeah, Hopkins may want to keep his hands up. Well, if nothing else, Pascal seems to have managed to slow Hopkins' offense just a little bit in this round. Bernard isn't exactly painting him with right hands, and that, it, but that's just as I say that, yeah. he Boxing. paints him with the right hand. He's so easy to get hit with those right hand leads. Okay, box on. So, even has been a good round at the end. Oh, still, Pascal cannot land the clean punches. Hopkins got in a left hand body shot and then a left hook upstairs in the corner. Swim without getting wet, son. Stay off them ropes and run the combinations on him. He's trying to steal. He always saved in the late round. So he saves everything to try to go home now in the late round. Don't let him steal, John. We still in Canada. Don't let him steal. Use your legs. You got to work in there. Get to him. Get to him and explode with your hands up high. Go upstairs. Here you see Hopkins land a right hand. It hit on the side of the head of Pascal. Pascal went down as a result of that, though, even though it was not a power punch, the referee didn't call it a knockdown. Officially, it really is. If you touch the gloves, your gloves... You're both right. Any, any punch that hit you... you You're both down. right. I was wrong. But, it's a knockdown. Yeah, but I was glad they didn't call it. I'm glad they didn't call it a knockdown, but officially it was. Punches in the ninth round. Pascal 6 of 26, Hopkins 12 of 31. In all likelihood, Bernard has moved ahead on an objective scorecard. Harold, Harold Letterman. That should have been scored a knockdown. I don't know. I mean, you know, it was a clean knockdown. There's no doubt about it. Bernard Hopkins hit him. Jean Pascal's gloves touched. That's a knockdown. Ian John Lewis blew in period. End the story. It was a knockdown. But you cannot score the round 10-8. Why not? 
Why not? Did you? He won the round. No. He won the round and he knocked it down. No, he didn't call it a knockdown. So score it 10-9. Oz, they didn't call a knockdown. You can't score it 10-8, right? Well, you, you could score it 10-8 if you, if you feel that Pascal was badly hurt, but you obviously don't feel that way, Harold. No, I don't. I, I mean, yo, it was a close round, but Bernard won it. Be as it may, Bernard Hopkins goes into the lead. He wins uh, four Wait, rounds in a row easily with the league right hands. Five rounds to four, 86-85, Bernard Hopkins. He's Good looking, left hook. He's, he's actually out of the Uppercut Boxing by Pacquiao with his jab. His jab is with the system. He's but landing the right hand. Time. He's Come landing the game. large and left hooks. All the way around. He's roughing him up. He's becoming Man increasingly dominant as the rounds go by. Right. Which Let's was go. the case in the first fight as well. Now, one judge gave Pascal a 10-10 round, an even round in the 12th of the first fight. That was instrumental in helping to create the draw. Pascal lands the right hand. That's a knockout. And knockout. again, his glove touches the canvas. And again, it's going to be ruled not a knockdown. I'm not as sure that that was an official knockdown, but I'm not the first sure one surely was. Well, regardless whether it's a knockdown or not, all of those right handed leads that he's hitting with, you know, it doesn't do him any good. You know, I'll tell you what, guys. Twice his coincidence, three times his pattern. He keeps slipping like that after Hopkins clocks him in the face. Maybe they were both knocked out. Between fights. Coca-Cola was poured on that big painted area in the center of the ring to try to make it more tacky. Bernard has beaten him in every area right now. Outside of that one big right hand he got caught with, he's beaten Pascal all the way. Pascal just landed the left hook. But again, Hopkins was but, moving away. But Hopkins landed a solid jab when he was coming in also. Well, down in Houston, Texas, George Foreman is watching. And surely the great champion will be rooting for b in the next two rounds. Take a deep breath. All right, let's organize our defense. Let him give him, let him give you his first two shots, but react as soon as he's at a safe distance. You're, you become the attacker. Get near him. Be at ease, but be the aggressor. Bring the rope. You ain't gotta leave your feet. Bring your feet with you. You ain't gotta lie. Tip your hat. Right hand, left hand. Here we once again see Bernard land a right hand. Right hand lead through the center, got out of the way, and as a result of landing the punch, Pascal went down again. He touched the glove, glove touched the floor. Should have been another knockdown. He would not have went down and touched the floor if he hadn't have been hit. It was really the momentum of his own miss that carried him down after the hit. That is a knockdown. Once again in the 10th round, Hopkins more than doubled Pascal's landed punch numbers. Pascal hasn't landed double digits in a single round. Hopkins landed 16 punches in that last round. He's now two points ahead on Harold Letterman's scorecard. Closing in on possibly supplanting George Foreman as the oldest man ever to win a legitimate championship. Foreman was 45 when he knocked out Michael Moore on November 5, 1994. Hopkins is 192 days older than George was that night. Now it's Pascal using his head and trying to turn it into an alley fight. He yep. seems to have the sense of desperation. He seems to be aware that he's trailing in the fight. He's tired and he doesn't have the season not experience to hey, fight off of natural instincts. Why or does he have the craft to set up a knockout against a fighter as skilled as Bernard Hopkins? It would have to be, in some way, a fortunate situation. He doesn't have the craft to be able to scientifically set it up. But he does have the power and the hand speed, and we've seen it earlier in the fight. Definitely. Bernard has smothered his punches. Whenever he punches his pass guys, none have a little swinging room. Bernard has smothered his punches by going right to the inside. 
trading leather. Hopkins doesn't exactly love to trade, but he's clearly feeling very confident here. And you can see how difficult it is for Pascal to maintain balance. He landed a left-hand shot and fell all the way across the top of the rope. Punching and smothering at the same time. Pascal is getting the crowd back into the fight. 30 seconds left in this round. Hopkins using the whole ring. Trying to keep Pascal at bay. Canadian fighter has landed only 60 punches all night against the most brilliant defender of modern times. And even though Pascal had those flares, the extra few clean punches to me for the most part have been by Bernard. Play Bernard smothers Pascal punches, punches by doing just what he's doing. All right, every time you do what I tell you to do, it pays off for you. Breathe deeply. Breathe deeply. Keep going. Every time he clinches, you get back at him. You hit him where you want to hit him, as long as you hit him. It's going to be a heavy. Finish him out. Bend the knees from the now, exhale off the rope. This jab keeps him from backing you up. Keep that jab alert and alive, baby. When he go to punch, punch in the middle. Okay, you can go back. I'll catch you. Can we keep him up the back of our head? Okay, gentlemen, come on, roll up, please. Can a young, proud champion, a man in his prime, do something dramatic here to save his title? Does Hopkins have another round left in him? Twenty-three years in professional boxing. Bernard Hopkins' whole career is a tribute to the advantages of being made, not poor. Throughout his career, his opposite number was the great Roy Jones. He was never brought into the sport with the kinds of gifts that Jones enjoyed. He didn't have all that physical talent. We saw that when first they met in 1993. Bernard had to learn every detail. He had to master the craft. And he did it like no one else in his generation. We saw that when he fought Wait Jones up, again up, last up, year and dominated him just as completely as Jones had dominated him in 93. With what's made not born, you can last a long, long time. Particularly if you live a monastic life. If you don't drink, you don't smoke, you eat the right things, you train as clearly and cleanly as you can. Everything about that defines Bernard Hopkins. Pascal has talent. Pascal has I physical gifts. Punches. I mean, the crowd went crazy, but he did not land anything. That was something pretty dramatic Pascal came up with, and Hopkins, as he's done all night, answered right back. Pascal has got to go all out. And Bernard is such a smart guy. That's going to be very difficult for Pascal to stop him. The old man is trying to stay away. He's hurt. His legs are not steady. And Pascal is cooperating with him. 46 years old and getting a break from the younger man who didn't go after him. Nope. Didn't go after him when it mattered most. Less than a minute to go. Less than a minute to history for Hopkins. Boy, he goes! Came up, came up. Boy, he goes! He
And if he makes it to the bell, in all likelihood, he's going to make it happen. He's going to make it happen and become the oldest man ever to win a legitimate championship in boxing. Unless these scores are way out of whack, Bernard Hopkins has done it. Well, you know what you said in 1994, Michael Moore and George Foreman, it's happened. Get ready to say it again. Well, when it happened for George Foreman in 94, <laughs> it happened out of the blue. Yes. On a tremendous one-two and a knockout shot. Bernard Hopkins made it happen with hard work, with diligent dedication, and with pride. And yet, there were some close rounds in this fight, including the last one where Hopkins was badly hurt. We are in Montreal. The first fight most people think Hopkins won, it was a draw. But the judges are not from Canada or the USA. They are from Italy, the Philippines, and Thailand. Which in theory means objectivity. Let's take a look back at some highlights from the fight. Very quickly. Round three. After Pascal had won the first two rounds, Hopkins started to come on. Hit him with that big right hand. But then in round four, Hopkins was hurt. As Pascal had the first chance to possibly press his advantage. Round six, Hopkins, kidney punches, thumbs in the eye, every trick, and then at the beginning of the next round, push-ups to embarrass his opponent. Round nine, was this a knockdown? Two rounds in a row, Pascal's glove touched the canvas after contact from Hopkins' glove. In neither case did Hopkins get credit for a knockdown. Here's the second of those two instances. Swung over the top of Hopkins after a straight right hand. Touched the gloves on the canvas. Referee Ian John Lewis of England ruled neither. A knockdown. And then in the 12th round, the last big chance for Pascal. That winging right hand, which clearly hurt Hopkins. But with a minute and a half to go in the fight, Pascal was unable to press his advantage. And the old man made it to the finish line. Probably to make history. Leave it again. Leave it again. Harold, you scored at 115-113. Yeah, and, and to tell you the truth, if he and John Lewis would have at least scored one knockdown, he would have won really decisively. i tell you something, Jim. Also, he and John Lewis blew an awful lot of those rabbit punches. I mean, Jean Pascal rabbit punched him constantly. He and John Lewis should have taken away a point. And we have mentioned many times, George Foreman, you'll remember them 